When it comes to the song Hey Jude, most would agree it's one of the band's best songs. It's evident as to why. Its personal origin, its orchestration, and its commercial success. In fact, it would be the band's most successful song and have the longest run on the charts for them. The story begins on a drive Paul was taking to visit Cynthia Lennon and her son Julian. John was divorcing her, and Paul decided to drop in and comfort them to let them know that everything was going to be okay. On the nearly hour-long drive, he was brainstorming songs, as he tended to do. Some of the first lines that came to him were, Hey Jules, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Paul eventually changed the name to Jude, a reference he said to the character Judd from the musical Oklahoma. Paul would play an early version of the song on piano for John and Yoko in tow. When he got to The Movement You Need Is On Your Shoulder, he let John know that he was probably going to drop that line. John told him not to, that he thought it was the best lyric. Paul said now that whenever he performs that line, he always thinks of John. John liked the song, saying, Damn good set of lyrics, and I made no contribution to that. Despite knowing it was written for his son, John felt, at least subconsciously, that Paul wrote it for him. That he was saying to John, it was going to be alright. Particularly, you found her, now go and get her. This speaks volumes that, early on in this track, they had this innate power to connect with people and whatever hardships that they had in their lives. Recording sessions went well, with the band realizing it was perfect for their next single. Ringo reflected on it saying, It felt good recording it. We put it down a couple times, trying to get it right, and, like everything else, it just clicked. That's how it should be. George Martin would take an early version of the song and have it scored for the orchestra part at the end. These same musicians would also provide the claps and the choral vocals. They were happy to do this, as they got double pay. Only one musician refused, saying, I'm not going to clap my hands and sing Paul McCartney's bloody song. This would be the track that Ringo almost missed because he was in the restroom. Knowing that it would be a while before his drums came in, he snuck off and ran back to play just in time. I often misattributed this story to A Day in the Life, but apparently it happened here. A blooper and expletive are left in the final version, with John screwing up a lyric and saying effing hell. The band knew the song was something special, as did producer George Martin. However, he had his doubts about how the public would react. George Martin said, It was a long song. In fact, after I timed it, I actually said, You can't make a single that long. And John asked, Why not? I couldn't think of a good answer, really. Except the pathetic one that disc jockeys just wouldn't play it. He said, They will if it's us. And of course, he was absolutely right. Three takes of a music promo film would be shot at Twickenham Studios with a live crowd. For this performance, only the vocals were live. When the song was released, it was a major success and encapsulated the tiredness yet optimism felt by many of the late 60s. Various takes would be released throughout the years, with my absolute favorite being on the Love soundtrack. What sold me on it was when the instrumentals go silent and you just have the claps and the vocals. With Paul's scream, everything comes back in for a grand finale. An amazing track, to say the least. What do you think about this song? Let me know in the comments below. The content on this channel is made possible from viewers like you. Help the channel grow by supporting me on Ko-fi, which you can find a link to below. You can also help by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you guys next time.